right, here we so, go. So, so everybody, I have gathered you all here today for a very special reason. And that reason is because I want us to read this absolute abomination of a script that an AI generated. <laughs> because whenever we did the Spyro movie, we got a lot of comments saying, Oh, this is so terrible. I bet an AI could do better. So we're going to put that to the test. So I present to you, everyone, uh, Spyro on the Nightmare Realm, an AI generated Spyro the Dragon movie script. Here so, we go. She's so. done it again. <laughs> What? What does that mean? <laughs> She's brought us against our will again. Please free go. us! Please. I haven't seen my family in three months. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting paid. You're gonna sit here and you're gonna read my script! But anyway guys, shall we begin? Okay. Yeah! 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 I, okay. oh, I guess. Do it. Wahoo! We open on a stormy night. The camera zooms across a turbulent field and pans up to reveal a magnificent castle, its alabaster stone appearing navy in the dim light. Two figures stand atop the castle, silhouetted against the flashes of lightning. It is a new age of magic and a new age of war. The speaker raises his head and opens his sickly yellow eyes. It's Malifor. The Dark Master grins, flashing his curved teeth. We dragons will fly again. We will reclaim the skies! He roars the words, and the sky grows dark, and a terrible wind appears, tearing at the fabric of reality and bending space-time. The second figure recoils, terrified by the might of the Dark Master. He steals his nerve and roars at Malifor. You cannot defy me! <laughs> <laughs> it's me, bitch. The earth shakes and shatters, the sky erupts, and the landscape collapses into flames. But the flames do not consume Ignitus. Malifor laughs. Impressive! I didn't know you possess such a capacity for destruction, Guardian Ignitus. I will show you once again that you are not invincible. Ignitus opens his mouth and a powerful oh. bolt of lightning strikes down, smashing Stop. into the ground with a deafening crack. Suddenly, Voltaire swoops down from the castle spires, his scales still crackling with electric energy. He snarls, looking over at Ignitus. No, you will not. I <laughs> not. <laughs> no! You <laughs> not. That's like Pinocchio energy. Voltaire's like... eyes burn with a hatred that rivals Malifor's own. Let's finish this, then. Wait, the... what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? plot twist. Voltaire's a bad guy. Oh shit! The two <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the two dragons meet in battle. Malifor laughs maniacally, watching the two guardians clash in mortal combat. He had successfully won one guardian over to his side. It was only a matter of time before the rest fell before him. He flies higher into the sky, into the rupture in space-time, and carries on with his plan. His laugh booms across the sky and through the universe, a sound of eternal glee. Voltaire and Ignite spiral through the air, locked in battle. Bolts of lightning and bursts of flame explode in the air, adding to the chaos of the storm. The sky cracks open, and the torn piece of fabric of reality is exposed to the heavens. Holy shit! And to the rest of reality. <laughs> Ignite and Voltaire pause, enraptured. They stare into the schism formed in the storm, and the Dark Master in its eye. Malifor laughs. But his laugh fades. It is replaced by an unearthly wail. I can't believe it's coming! To an end! Suddenly, a blinding light pierces through the rupture in space-time, engulfing the Dark Master and the two guardians. When the light finally fades, there is only a pile of rubble where the Dark Master once stood. And where the two dragons once stood, there is nothing. Oh my god! Holy fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! Cut to the Dragon Temple, morning. Spyro the Dragon awakes with a start. He is surrounded by dummies. He rolls over onto his belly, pushing himself up into his forelegs and trying to blink his eyes open. He looks at the ceiling and realizes he's in the training room. What? W what happened? Sparks? He tries standing up, but it's not working. He tries again. This time he manages to get up. He looks down at his hind legs. Both of them are wrapped in bandages. Oh, what happened to my legs? You passed out during your final training exercise. Well, d did I pass? You were the first to reach this point. You did better than any other guardian, but you did not make it in time. I... I failed? 
Terador nods. Mm -hmm. Spyro sits up, disappointed. He, he made it further. He did better. He was the first person to reach that point, better than any but other he didn't guardian. Make it in but time. he failed the task to become yes. a guardian. So yes. all the other guardians, the other guardians have failed. <laughs> if they all, if no one else. Like, uh, we need guardians. It's all just like you pass anyway. I will instruct you again tomorrow. Now, I must attend to my other duties. Good day, Spyro. Spyro turns and walks out of the training room, leaving the arena behind. Terador calls after him. Get yourself healed up in time for your next attempt. My legs are fucking broken. <laughs> <laughs> wonky legs, wonky legs. I can't it's fine. walk! He has wings, he doesn't need legs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go. let's go. Okay. Spyro walks through the halls of the temple, deep in thought. He thinks about what happened, and he thinks about what he can do to improve. He thinks about how he can become a better guardian. Spyro's thoughts are suddenly interrupted by Sparks the Dragonfly darting up beside him, full of excitement. There ya! I've been looking all over for you! What is it? You're gonna wanna see this! See what? Sparks zooms ahead Whoa. down a corridor. A cheeky smirk on his insect face. Spyro does his best to keep up with him. C come back, my legs are broken! <laughs> 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 hey, why all the secrecy? I uh, thought it was a surprise, but yeah, you're right. It's a surprise! It's, well, it's a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Did you know it was a surprise? Uh, did I tell you it was a surprise? I am so surprised right now. No, you're not surprised. Yeah, I haven't showed you the surprise. It'll be so surprising. <laughs> oh my God, don't don't right. tell them I it's a surprise. Oh my God. Uh, I need a surprise. Oh That's today's secret okay. word. Sparks turns a car. S U P R I S E. Surprise! Oh my god. Sparks turns a corner and enters one of the dorms. Spyro walks in and sees dozens of dragons huddled around a central television set. <laughs> Watching a news broadcast. The new. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> The newscast shows footage of dragons flying in the sky, of massive buildings burning, of crowds cheering in the streets. Oh, oh my god! Oh, god. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The world so, is so, so. <laughs> hey, it's me. It's called a TV. I know what a TV is. <laughs> Why'd you sound like Danny DeVito? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a freaking TV. This is a special kind of TV. It shows the world as moles see it. Look! Moles can't see? <laughs> moles are blind! Moles can't see. <laughs> so, Spyro and Sparks push their way to the front of the crowd of dragons and watch the news broadcast. On the screen, they see two dragons battling on a rooftop and a third scary looking dragon flying above them. They are silhouetted against the light of an enormous rift in the sky. That's Ignitus and Voltaire. What are they doing? Celebrating, of course! One of the other dragons shushes Sparks, but a little red dragon starts cheering. Yeah, give it up, boys! We won! The war is over! I'm sure the moles would tell us more when they wake up! Spyro casts a nervous glance at Flame. Something's not right. That rift in the sky looks like bad news. Who cares? It's the beginning of the Dragon Empire! The war is over again, and look! The sun is coming out from behind the clouds! <laughs> Father, I'm excited for genocide! <laughs> Spyro moves away from the crowd and looks out of the window. The sun is just peeking out from over the towering mushrooms of the nearby swamp, and drapes the world in its golden glow. All looks perfect, if it weren't for the massive gaping rift in the sky. He turns back to the crowd, who are cheering madly and singing in celebration. That thing in the sky is bad news, and no one seems to care. We need to do something about it, and fast. Ah, wait! That thing just looks like an ominous light to me! Exactly! When has an ominous light ever been a good thing? Come on, Sparks, let's find the others and come up with a plan! Spyro darts out of the dorm room! <laughs> My legs are broken. <laughs> <laughs> still, still broken. <laughs> Spyro darts out of the dorm room. Sparks hobbles after him. Wait, what happened to Sparks? <laughs> Why is Sparks hobbling? How they traded injuries. Wait, what are you gonna do about this? Sparks gestures at the screen. 
You're unbelievable. <laughs> You're unbelievable. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say it like that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to, later that day, Spyro has returned from the medic after having the bandages taken off of his injured hind legs. He sits in a chair in the training room, watching the screen. Flame the dragon has brought the group together in the briefing room. The other dragons stare at the screen, watching the newscast with fearful curiosity. What is the meaning of this, Spyro? It's a conspiracy! No, it's not. <laughs> yes! It is! No, it's not. Yes! It is! <laughs> no. no! Why is Sparks sent into a flat earther? Oh, <laughs> the world is flat, Spyro! Why are Voltaire and Ignitus fighting? They were guardians together! They were friends! They were also enemies. Were they? That's not the <laughs> point! They were. <laughs> Sorry, that's such a shit line. They were also enemies. <laughs> they were roommates. That's not the point! They were friends until Voltaire betrayed Ignatus! Flame perks up, confused. Uh, I must have been on a field trip that day. When did Voltaire betray Ignatus? Why did he betray Ignatus? I think we can assume it was because of what he saw when he flew into the dragon hole. <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> I, 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 I love the fact that the first word he says is butt. He died how he lived. <laughs> Flying into Dragon Hall. <laughs> but he told no one. Spyro looks down solemnly. What he saw was too great and too terrible for his mind to handle. Malfor has created something beyond his control, and now it threatens to consume the world. S -S Spyro, I, I don't understand. What is Malifor? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think if anyone, she should remember him the most. Oh, no. I can't believe my perfect waifu has forgotten me! <laughs> I didn't forget you, Master. That's what he's after New Dragon Hall. Spyro pauses. Well, technically it was the mountain. Does anyone else remember Malifor? I remember the name, but not much else. The war was because of him. No, the war was because of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> you in your holes. Cinder takes a deep breath and looks at the ceiling. She turns her head from side to side, as if listening to a distant voice. She looks at Spyro. I remember now. Spyro takes Cinder's paw and gives it a reassuring squeeze. He then scowls. They have paws, finally! They have paws now! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not fingers anymore! <laughs> I refuse to believe that Ignitus would destroy the castle like that! He wouldn't have had to. Malifor put a part of himself in the hole! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why is everyone calling it the hole? Like, the Cinder's calling it the hole and everyone's just like, Oh yeah, Malifor, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Malifor. And Cinder's like, the hole! <laughs> and that thing is out there, somewhere, Ready to strike. There's no limit to the destruction it could cause. Ember stands up. You're right! And we have to be the ones to stop it! I'm with you. Me too! But we don't know how. I know someone who might. Cut to Warfang, early afternoon. Oh shit. The professor is toiling away in his workshop. He is a very methodical person and likes to take things slow when he builds something. He makes his plans with care, and then lays out his materials slowly, one by one. Suddenly, a small fairy in a yellow dress bursts into his workshop, looking frazzled. Professor, Professor, you're wanted in the main hall immediately. It's an emergency. The Professor doesn't look up from his work. Oh, what is it, Zoe? I'm a little busy. It's an emergency. He looks up at her, annoyed. Is your emergency more important than my new invention? <laughs> if so, you should call... A taxi. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> it's about the dragons. The dragons? Zoe the nods dragons. enthusiastically. The dragons. The dragons. 
They say Malifor returned and opened a hole in the universe. <laughs> and two of the guardians of the Dragon Temple have disappeared. The council assumed since the interdimensional portals are in your area ex expertise, that you would have some insight. Professor Fizzlebug! <laughs> <laughs> Fizzlebug! Fizzlebug! It's me! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where the fuck AI dungeon got Fizzlebun from, but I'm so happy. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't say my name. <laughs> Fucking Fizzlebong. <laughs> Professor Fizzlebong sighs. Ugh, that day again. I'd hope that'd put the issue to rest once and for all. He puts down his tools and stands up. Come with me, Zoe, for my name isn't Professor Arthur Q.J. Fizzlebong. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe fidgets. Professor, I really think we should be meeting with the council. The professor walks to a table covered in a large cloth. There is something you must understand first, Zoe. <laughs> he removes the cloth cover. Underneath, a large clock sits on a pedestal made out of solid silver. The hand points to five minutes before noon. What does it mean, Professor? It means I have no time to waste. That's <laughs> What? <laughs> that was a lot of setup for a joke, Professor. He does not care. It means we have no time to waste. Let's go. They exit the workshop. Cut to the council chambers. The council members sit around a large table, talking. Elora sits at the head of the round table. She is wearing a long, flowing black dress and looks regal. Ooh, the rest of the council members sit around the table in various costumes and outfits. This is a catastrophe unlike anything we've ever seen before. The explosion wiped out all of Autumn Plains. No, not Autumn Plains. Why is Moneybags on the council? Why is Moneybags on the council? Also, how is she at the head of a round table? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Elora's dripped out and everyone else is wearing costumes. Someone's just wearing like a cow costume in the background. Come on, guys, keep, please keep reading. I've just fucking seen something. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Adam, this is you. If the dragons are so concerned about safety, why didn't they warn us? I thought they were our allies. They are. Moneybag scoffs. <sighs> I think they have their own agenda. They look down on us mammals and want us uh, to be subjugated. I don't think that at all. I'm sorry. I'm like nasty. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Fuck. Nasty oh, orcs God. on the console. <laughs> <laughs> Oh great, now I've got to get into <laughs> Why else would they show us this? It's almost as if they want us to panic! The professor enters the room with Zoe at his side. Isn't it obvious? The dragons revealed the time rift because they wanted us to know it was there. <laughs> Why would they do that? So that they could send someone through! Exactly. He high fives Zoe. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Did I get high fived like away? Oh my dad! <laughs> <laughs> he just swats her out of the air. <laughs> I knew I was right. So what do we do now? The council members talk it over. We need to send someone to investigate. Let me send some of my little soldiers. They're very disposable. <laughs> Wow! wow. <laughs> I am the leader of my people! Send them to die! You know what, that's kinda nasty. That's kinda nasty. They're very disposable, so no one will miss them if they get hurt. Good idea. We also need to get rid of the time rift. <laughs> How? By closing it, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to oh the Dragon boy. Temple, evening. Spyro, Sparks, Ember, Flame, and Cinder attempt to sneak out of the temple grounds. Stay close to me, and stay quiet. The dragons walk through the swamps and forests, sneaking past sleeping guards. Are they in prison? <laughs> no. <laughs> they're, they're, they just live at the temple as their home. Right, so, what's the plan? We travel to Warfang and talk to the professor. If anyone can figure out what a big scary hole in time and space is doing in the sky, it'll be him. 
I, you, you go on ahead. I'll catch up with you later. I just need to go check something first. What about me? You stay with Spyro. You can protect you, because you definitely oh. need protecting. You, you, you <laughs> dumb, dumb <laughs> little shit. You need protecting. We're literally Sparks, worthless. Sparks inherited his dad's misogyny. Man, protect woman. Man, strong. Another generation of misogynists. No, he can't. The Nightmare Tyrant is still out there, and he'll kill us all if anything goes wrong. The what? Em <laughs> Ember turns to Cinder, terrified. The Nightmare Tyrant? What are you talking about, Cinder? The Nightmare Tyrant killed our parents, killed the rest of our kind, and he'll kill us too if we what? get caught! Holy shit! <laughs> Wait, what? what are these fucking plot revelations? <laughs> shit. How do you know all this? I dreamt it. Spyro turns okay. to Cinder, his voice full of concern. What else did you see in your dream, Cinder? I saw you cheat on me, you Nightmare. dick. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that Nightmare Tyrant is getting closer to the village. He's burning the houses down around everyone. I can't get away from him. Please help me. Are you asleep with your eyes open? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Snap out of it, Cinder! It's only a dream! Did you see his face? I... I... I, I don't know. Sparks is hovering there awkwardly. Well, uh, that show sure was interesting. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I need to go check on something. I'm gonna see a fire. I'll catch up with you later in Warfang. A fire? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't start the fire. It was always fire. <laughs> this is the <laughs> time. <laughs> I guess we don't have a choice. Right. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, bro. Let's go, bro. Charging through the desert, it is bro. The dragons continue their journey to Warfang while Sparks turns around and heads deeper into the swamp. He looks over his shoulders nervously, as if afraid of being followed. He continues until he sees a giant, muscular purple dragon. <gasps> <gasps> Daddy. Is this is this me? No. Is this, this is, not Malador? No, no. It's another this is, one. This is Mystery Dragon. A, what? It's the master. <laughs> Sorry I took so long. I hope I'm not too late. You are not. Great. I won't matter business for the world. Sparks follows the giant purple dragon deeper into the woods until they reach a massive opening in the ground. It looks like a crater, but there's no indication of how it could have been formed. The dragon walks inside and Sparks follows. Do you know why I did what I did? Why I opened the eye of the universe? Shit. <laughs> the little dragonfly shakes his head. Because someone has to. Because the mortals who made this world wouldn't do it. Sparks nods his head. I'm sorry, but why is why out of all the characters, why is it that the Sparks gets to be part of this inner sanctum of opening the fucking universe? <laughs> and it's just, this little guy is just like, yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, I gotta go. Uh, we fetch knew my we couldn't trust boy. this fucker. He's always up to something. <laughs> it's always me. I understand. I do. Good. They walk deeper and deeper into the oppressive darkness, until they come to a chamber with no visible ceiling or edges. The enormous purple dragon picks up Sparks and holds him aloft, his yellow glow a tiny speck in the endless sea of black. I need you to shine, little Sparks. The guiding light you were always born to be. A blue orb of light shoots out from Sparks, and the walls of the chamber suddenly shift and shift again. Sparks is no longer falling, but standing on solid ground. Yeah! What's happening to me? Oh my goodness. Sparks screams as his body begins yeah! to shift. His oh, eyes no. bulge, his mouth gapes, his limbs stretch and bend in strange ways. What his eyes fuck? shift from a bluish color to a greenish color. The purple dragon pays Sparks no mind, instead fixating on the marvel that has just appeared before him, a magnificent shining portal. What? Dragonflies possess a very particular form of magic, and I need that magic. If any of the other dragons had tried to harness the power of the dragonfly, they would have failed. But not you. 
You were meant to be the one who would open the port. Fighting through the pain, Sparks looks up at the dragon. But I'm not a dragon! No, but you will be. Spark screams as he is torn in half! They did it! They killed him! They got rid of him! We did it, guys! We saw Ginny is no more! That's Game of Thrones, Steph! Holy fucking shit! We fade in on a desolate landscape. The earth is charred, and the rubble of fallen castles litter the land. A few stragglers dig through the debris to help survivors to their feet. Above them, the time rift looms. Bianca the rabbit stands defiantly in the midst of the ruins. She clenches her jaw and stares directly at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca is a powerful mage. She can summon flames and blast her foes with lightning. And break the third wall. <laughs> <laughs> Looking directly at the camera. It won't be enough, but it's all I have. She raises her hand, and a bolt of lightning flashes from the ground up to the sky. Hunter helps an injured gem cutter to their feet. He turns oh. and looks at Bianca. Also, like, what are you trying to do to it, man? The council said they're sending Norts to come fix it. I know, and I'm afraid. Hunter turns away from Bianca and walks back to the fray. He searches for an ally to help him rescue the injured gnome. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the gnomes. Bianca grips her wand tighter and focuses with all her might. If she can single-handedly close the time rift, she'll be known worldwide as the most powerful sorcerer alive. She closes her eyes and begins to concentrate. When she opens them again, she sees a great swarm of norks marching towards the battle, their faces concealed behind their thick metal masks. I have to help. <laughs> Nasi orders his Nork army to halt. Hunter runs up to the army. Halt. Hey, hey, guys, stop right there. You can't come in. The gnomes need your help to repair the damage from the time warps or something. It's just a jump to the left. Na nasty nods and look. <laughs> nasty nods. <laughs> nasty nods. <laughs> Get nasty, Sorry, nods. Nasty no. Nods nastily. <laughs> <laughs> nasty nods and looks up at the time rift in the sky. I haven't seen anything like this since the war. The council will want to talk to you. Um, can you like close the time warp, man? Let's do the, the time, time warp. warp I was just thinking about that, but I was waiting for a moment. Yes, but it will take some time. Malifor is not only a legendary purple dragon, but he is also a powerful wizard. This time rift is his way of escaping into another dimension. He can't stay here any longer. Like, thanks for the exposition, man. Where is he? <laughs> I'm not sure, but we must find him. Bianca stops what she is doing and turns to Hunter and Nasty. Can you fly me to another dimension? Well, I'm a cat and I don't have wings, but I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I've never flown once in my life. I think I could help too. <laughs> Great. I'll see you on the other side. She closes her eyes and concentrates. She is transported out of the rubble of the fallen kingdom. She floats weightlessly in the void of space. Bianca opens her eyes, expecting to see a strange new world. Instead, she finds that the landscape has not changed at all. The void of space is still void of anything. Uh, where are we? The void of space. Bianca looks around and catches a glimpse of something in the distance. Is that a, a planet? N no, no, I. Oh, wait a second, I think it is a planet. <laughs> a very large planet. Oh, and it's headed right for us. I, ju I just love the fact that it's like Bianca says, like, is it a planet? And just like corrects her wrongly, yes. like, no, it's a planet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, is that a planet? Like, no, no, it's a planet. No, it's, it's a, a planet. planet. Okay. Bianca opens her spellbook and raises her wand. Get behind me. Nasty hides behind her. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter pulls his sword from its sheath. His sword? Uh, how, okay. how can you tell which one is Malifor? They all kind of look planet shaped to me, man. Wait, what? Bianca begins casting a spell. <laughs> Malifor will be the one with three heads. What? Two. <laughs> one. <laughs> one <head. laughs> what? Bianca zaps a spell out from her wand. It makes contact with the planet, and the skies fill with green flames. Nasty is his laser rifle right right. at the flaming sky! <laughs> 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 Am I like 
cutting off his heads as I go. <laughs> I don't one know. With three heads. You just set the plan one. one. Head. <laughs> Nasty aims his laser rifle at the flaming sky. Hold this gun right here and keep your hands in sight. He hands, he hands the gun to Hunter. Wait a second. <laughs> uh, did I just get a weapon to commit a war crime with? Based. Yes, you did. Use it wisely. Uh, we'll have to fight our way through the flames. They just put the flames there. <laughs> what they the caused flame? their own problem. I don't think we have a choice. Unless you want to get fried in the fire. Bianca grits her teeth. This is Malifor's hidden dimension. Come on, boys. We need to find him before he finds us. I love that they're friends with Nasty. <laughs> Nasty's just vibing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. He's had a, he's had like a like a redemption arc, and we haven't even known about it. Yeah. So yeah. They, stopped, they stopped calling him ugly, uh, and he actually turned out to be a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they stopped After bullying. Some therapy yeah. counseling. You know. Yeah. Was... Anyway. Bianca leads Nasty and Hunter through the flames. The heat is intense, but they manage to fight their way to the front of the flaming sky. Suddenly, the heat dies down and the flames fade away. They stop and catch their breath. As the flames retreat, they reveal a lush forest and a beautiful blue sky. What? They can see the planet and its three heads. The middle head is what? clearly smaller than the other two. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Like so I think they were correct when they had the Is That a Planet conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's a planet. It's a Lovecraftian horror. That's our destination. Come on, we need to reach it before Malifor does. The trio makes their way across the fields of Malifor's planet. I thought I was the planet! Fade in on the Warfang city outskirts night. Spyro Cinder Flame and Ember approach the gates of Morfang. The gates are sealed shut and heavily fortified. Can you blast your way through? Probably, but it would be a messy way of getting in. Ember steps forward. Leave this to me, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Warrior, surrender to wizard! You will not be harmed! Surrender to wizard! You will not see it every day! <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, there is no response. Ember, what are you doing? They don't have to die! We can make a deal with them! No, they do have to die. <laughs> Why? We, we just wanted to go into the city! Why are we- why are we threatening them with death? Ember, I just want to commit murder! <laughs> <laughs> uh, screw this! Spyro- <laughs> <laughs> Spyro? Spyro with his Spyro bad language. Spyro self-aware of the script. <laughs> Spyro leaps into the air and flies over Warfang's walls. Which they could all do. <laughs> no problems. In the direction of City Hall. Spyro, stop! But it is too late. The young dragon has already flown out of sight. Well, I guess he thinks he's too cool for us. He's not the one who's cool. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, he cool. stands for cool. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'M THE BADDIE HERE! <laughs> you're, you're literally the most normie bitch I know, Ember. I FRITTED THE CITY <laughs> WITH DEATH! Flame looks confused. I don't get it. Why would the baddie be the baddie? Burger King <sighs> do foot I, do lettuce. Do I have to explain this to you, Flame? Are you that simple? Because baddies are mean. <laughs> Meanwhile, Spyro flies higher and soars over the city of Warfang. The time rift looms ominously in the sky before him. He can't help but think what it would be like if he were to fall into it. Suddenly, Spyro is startled by a strange voice in his head. It is not the comforting voice he is used to. This voice Wait, is what? evil and malignant. It says... Can you see it too, young Spyro? Can you see infinity? Can you see all time and space? Well, holy shit, Hunter, this is good shit. <laughs> <laughs> I... yes. Do you see me? Do you see me standing before you now? Yes. Do you see me? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Do you <laughs> see my hands? Uh, no, you're a dragon. We were doing up. so well, and now he has hands again. <laughs> Do you see my hands? They're so soft and moisturized. <laughs> They're good for holding. Spyro blinks, and suddenly finds himself flying over a completely different landscape. 
He is on Malifor's planet! Bro. Why are you doing this, Malifor? I'm not Malifor! I'm you! No, you're not. Malifor <laughs> <laughs> No. As I suspected, you lack the imagination to see the big picture. In your mind, all that matters is right now! But in your heart, you desire something greater. Spyro grits his teeth, gathers all of his courage, and roars at Malifor. I'm going to find out what you did to ignite us. I'm going to find out why you opened the rift in time and space, and I'm going to make you pay. Oh. I didn't open the rift. Spyro pauses, stunned. You're lying. I never lie, except all the times I do. <laughs> it was already open. What do you mean? The time and space tubes are like wormholes what? in the fabric of reality. They do not begin, and they do not end. They simply are. So, someone could go back in time, and someone could go forward in time? Exactly! With the right amount of magic, one could travel through the time and space tubes to any point in time and space. Oh my god! <gasps> So, so, if, if I wanted to destroy the world, I could go back in time and stop myself from doing it? Yes! You've done it before! That is edgy as fuck. What? You created this universe, and you've destroyed countless other ones! You simply <laughs> rewrote reality to give your story a happy ending! This is the plot of Undertale! <laughs> Anyway, Spyro is stunning. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell girl, slay. <laughs> Do you want to know the truth, Spyro? The truth of what you are? You are not only a rare purple dragon, you are the Nightmare Tyrant. Oh. The Nightmare Tyrant is the most feared being in all of myth and legend. He enslaves the minds of his victims and makes them his thralls. He is the very essence of evil. So does, does this imply that Spyro has been like sending Sin the fucking nightmare? <laughs> Wait, does this also imply that Spyro might have killed Sparks? Oh my fucking god. No, that can't be true. It's... It's not possible! Spyro is filled with anger, and with a mighty roar, he sends a blast of Rawr. magicka towards Malifor, who grins and sends a blast of electricity towards Spyro. Malifor laughs once more, and gestures towards the time rift below him. Let me show you your past, and your future, Nightmare! Suddenly, magic energy begins to build up around Spyro, and a portal opens up in the sky. Spyro turns to run, but the Nightmare Tyrant appears, his eyes burning with unholy fire. It's Spyro, older and more muscular. It's as if he's been plucked straight from Spyro's own future. Oh, no. The Nightmare oh, Tyrant my. begins to laugh. And from you what I can to tell- You me about this in advance, oh my god. <laughs> from this what I can tell, raw. this is the mystery dragon. So Ollie, would you like to be the Nightmare oh, Tyrant? Yeah. He's, so, he's, hang murdered, on. he's Mabby, murdered Sparks. Mabby, hang on. He's trolling Cinder. So yeah. it, 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 was, it was the <laughs> mystery dragon, monster. it's Spyro, and it's Malifor. So maybe we should all read these lines <laughs> at the same time and then you just lay yeah, them. Yeah, good fucking luck with that. Oh god, god yeah, that actually was effect. weak. I destroyed I, I think it's really great for Hideo Kojima to have written the script for us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hideo. The prophecy has been fulfilled. The Nightmare Tyrant is now a god. And you, my dearest brother, are my thrall. The Nightmare Tyrant <gasps> summons forth the deformed remains of what was once Sparks the Dragonfly. Oh, 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 just shows him his head. Which now resembles a twisted mockery of a dragon and binds them all in a ball of magic. Spyro yeah. makes eye contact with the creature that was once his dragonfly friend. He thinks to himself that he must do something and fast. Then the Nightmare Tyrant's eyes turn towards the portal and his eyes narrow. Holy fuck. How I shall make this world anew. As the prophecy foretold, so shall it be. Then he throws a ball of magic at the portal and the walls of reality shatter and the portal opens. Then, there is darkness. Cut to Warfang, Upper City. Meteors and lightning bolts rain from the time rift and batter the ancient dragon city. The professor and Zoe run as fast as they can back to his workshop. I have a plan, Zoe. <laughs> We're going to try and create a temporal anomaly. 
It's a shortcut through time and space. We could use it to escape. Why am I running? <laughs> but that's my <laughs> why, you, why are you running? <laughs> so you can fly. It's just running. <laughs> why fly when you can run? <laughs> she got her wings broken when the professor like swatted her out of the air. <laughs> hey, at least she's, she's not as in bad a shape as Sparks is right now. Yeah. Apparently. I'm gonna piss myself. <laughs> But that's where all the nightmare tyrant's power is coming from. Exactly. It's limitless of power source. He runs into his workshop, narrowly avoiding a bolt of lightning. He grabs an orb the size of a golf ball. I need to get this orb here to the time rift. We need to harness the power of the nightmare tyrant's temporal anomaly. The how professor... do they know who that is? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how do they I know? <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> The professor runs outside into the chaos. The rift above them is lighting up in bursts of green and red light. The skies themselves seem to be shaking. And then suddenly, everything is still. The sky is black and clear. The stars are out in force. <laughs> Cut to Cinder, Ember and Flame running through another part of the city. They stop in their tracks and look at the sky. The Nightmare Tyrant, I can feel his power. I can too. I sense something. Different. Cut to Bianca, Nasty, and Hunter standing below the battle between Spyro Malifor, Dragon Sparks, and the Nightmare Tyrant. <laughs> <It's>, Holy oh. <laughs> shit! We need to do something now. We can't. We have to wait. We can't interfere, man. The silver clock in the professor's <gasps> workshop finally strikes twelve. <laughs> it wasn't just a shit post. <laughs> Holy shit! Chekhov's no. clock in action. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> this all happened in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Then the skies explode. The heavens themselves split open and a pillar of fire rises from the earth. A pillar of fire that rises up to meet the skies. Malifor laughs hysterically. Okay, let me prepare myself here because I've been shouting every line of dialogue but this is all <laughs> all caps. So I don't know what the fuck I'm meant to do here. Behold! This is your future, Spyro! You are the greatest evil in the universe! You have lived up to your portrayal, and now you die in the fire of your own future! Spyro roars in defiance. The Inferno lashes at his wings. He remembers the last thing Ignitus ever told him before he disappeared. <sighs> in the end, everything is choose. Everything is choose? Choose your path. Choose what you want your ending to be. Choose a better script. <laughs> I... I choose... FREEDOM! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Spyro unleashed a furious explosion of purple ether energy from his jaws. Malifor howls in pain as the beam hits him. He falls back towards the city, but catches fire as he falls, and howls in pain once more. <laughs> My <laughs> ripples are on spiders form. And then he gets <laughs> burned to fucking death. <laughs> Space time ripples around Spyro's form and he summons forth a vortex of dark energy. This energy, like a great whirlpool, pulls Malifor towards it. The nightmare tyrant is pulled into the warp of time. This universe is mine. You will not stop me. You will not stop me. As the universe bends to Spyro's will, Malifor's form is twisted and warped. He shrieks with a mixture of rage, pain, and madness. His fiery form is pulled into the vortex. He screams and screams. <laughs> Holy shit. Then, what the fuck? Me, my little box jump. <laughs> oh my god. It's like fucking, he's shot in the face of a laser beam. He gets fired. He gets fucking ripped apart and chucked in the vortex. It's so extra. <laughs> 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 then the screams are silent. The nightmare tyrant is absorbed into Spyro's future. Spyro stares at the black hole in the sky. The portal leading to the past is now open. He is free. And he is one with the universe. His third eye opens. Fade to Warfang. Cinder is fluttering above the city, staring at the spot in the sky where Spyro disappeared. We did it. We saved this city. <laughs> <laughs> this is the equivalent of like any time the Avengers do anything. Yeah, we did it. Wait a second, what did we do? We did nothing. <laughs> we 
really did. <laughs> the professor looks at his silver <laughs> clock, which is still stopped at 12. He looks back at the portal. He notices that it is still open. He pokes his head out of the portal. Wait, what? He sees the nightmare tyrant what? being pulled into the warp of time. The old <laughs> mole smiles. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you failed me. <laughs> I tried my best, master. We got our hands on the nightmare tyrant's power. Now we can finally put an end to the nightmare realm. Roll credits. <laughs> what about Sparrow? What happens to him? He saves us all. He saved all of us, man. Don't copy what I say, you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> he chews his future. The professor turns to the silver clock once more. It's the Ignitus quote. Well, young dragon, <laughs> where might you be? I'm here. The professor turns to face the clock. Hunter, Bianca, oh. Nasty, Cinder, Ember, and Flame all turn to face the clock, too. Wait a second, he's still here? D did you do that? No. It was all of you. What? You chose your future. You chose freedom. You chose me. Tears begin to form in Ember's eyes. Aww. Where will you go? We're going home. Okay. <laughs> you are truly free. Spyro is no longer bound by the rules of time and space. That is why he is in my clock. What? what? No! <laughs> he's the clock. <laughs> he's the he's the clock. He's the he's the, he's, he's the clock. What happens when the clock strikes midnight? Spyro is silent for a moment before he speaks somberly. I don't know. The clock strikes midnight and the room goes pitch black. Spyro's voice is barely audible. I guess. I'll just find out, huh? Fade in slowly on a lush meadow. Spyro is lying in the long grass, still damp with cold morning dew. He blinks open his eyes. It is the first day <laughs> of his life. The sun is rising, casting the sky in a warm orange glow. Birds are singing. Butterflies are dancing through the grass. Spyro smiles. The universe has been restored to its rightful place. It's what? all back to normal. But is it better? That's for you to decide. Yes, objectively better than Hellskip. Spyro <laughs> leaps towards the camera and the movie's title fills the screen. Spyro, exclamation point, and the nightmare realm. What the yeah! actual what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so like, so what wow. happened to, what so happened to Sparks? <laughs> it's just a jump to the left. I'm gonna step to the right. With your hands on your hips. 